Anton Sugar, the antagonist of No Country for Old Men, is a sociopathic, goal-oriented, and tireless serial killer that becomes the harbinger of death and abomination for those unlucky enough to cross his path. A killer so calm and composed that after eliminating his targets, walks as if he's strolling in a park. If you're lucky and Anton agrees to negotiate with you, you can leave the fate of your life or death to a coin toss. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Hello everyone, welcome to Silence Channel. Today we are going to take a close look at the psychological and philosophical aspects of this iconic character, Anton Sugar. For this, we start with his physical features and then step by step we delve deeper into his mind to capture the essence of his philosophy and worldview. There's nothing likable or relatable about Anton's appearance. Starting with his childlike medieval hairstyle, I think it's fair to assume that he's cutting his own hair, especially since we see him in another scene stitching his wounds. So he might just perceive the external world as a threat, so much so that he doesn't trust anyone to come anywhere near him, especially with a sharp object like a needle or a scissor. His cowboy boots are aggressive and pointy, and we see them in the middle of many frames during the movie. And through these shots, they become a symbol of fear. Now, Sugar rarely speaks in the movie, but in the occasions that he does, it is in a slow pace and in low volume, almost like he's whispering something. Now, the content of his conversations are also important. He doesn't have a reciprocal relationship with the environment around him. He's so certain about his beliefs that it doesn't feel that it's necessary to listen to anyone else. The only chance that other characters have for survival is to appeal to his already established ideas and what Sugar might consider right and fair. He really is an alien or a robot with this zero and one logic. Now combining all of this with his cold, wide-eyed and weird stares completes the physical profile of a psychopathic killer. Now the first time that we see Anton in the movie is a perfect example of how you should introduce a villain. He gets arrested by a police officer only to regain his freedom few minutes after the scene. This is Coen Brothers' way of saying that Sugar is an uncontrollable force. The scene that Sugar strangles the poor officer is brutal, and the audience can feel the extent of violence in this scene from Anton's eyes popping out of their sockets and the officer's shoe prints on the floor. But if you listen carefully, there's also the sound of a moving train at the background. This sound is Anton's theme and is there to demonstrate that he is an unstoppable force just like a moving train. And now is the time for viewers to see an acting masterpiece by Javier Bardem. After killing the officer, we see an orgasmic sigh of relief in Sugar's face. It's as if a burden has been lifted of his shoulders. After finishing his job at the station, he gets back to his captive bolt stunner and brutally murders another man in the next scene. Now there's a common conceptual theme between these two scenes. Both cases seem non-random and they serve a specific purpose. I mean if you just look at his face you will find out that he really enjoys his homicidal activities. But at the same time his killings are not arbitrarily and even sometimes he spares others lives. Shigeru's actions are compulsive but not in the common sense of the word. When a normal person does something impulsive they usually end up regretting their decisions. But for Shigeru it doesn't seem like he's rushing into anything. He is steadfast and always confident in his actions, and this makes viewers curious about what Sugar's philosophy could be. That's why his shopping scene and his famous coin toss becomes the most iconic scene in the movie. Now the scene starts innocently enough and in the middle of the day, a conscious choice by Coin Brothers to make everything look as normal as possible. The store owner seems to mind his own business until he makes the biggest mistake of his life by asking Sugar about the weather. Now, people think that this question signals to Sugar that this guy is onto him. But I think that it's more than that. If that was the case, he would have immediately killed him. I think what's more unsettling for Sugar here is the fact that this guy doesn't mind his own business and likes to engage in idle chit chats. That's where he starts asking these weird questions, like what time do you go to bed or when do you close your store? Now, some of his inquiries are obvious threats, but I think what Sugar is looking for here are punctual and accurate responses. He wants the store owner to show him that he knows what he's doing with his life and doesn't take life for granted. Unfortunately, the store owner has lost his composure and is just trying to win Sugar's favor by agreeing with him. To Sugar, this guy doesn't appreciate living and he might even think that it's a miracle that he has survived so far. 
As the interrogation goes on, the man gets to a point of desperation. And we might not see that, but I think in a different manner, the situation is discomforting for Sugar as well. The mere existence of this man poses a challenge for his worldview. He believes that right now, the world is chaotic and imbalanced. This is my wife's father's place, uh, originally. <laughs> you married into it. That's the way you want to put it. I don't have some way to put it. That's the way it is. Tension increases in this scene, and we can feel that tension by hearing the rapper expanding on the counter. And now, it's time for a 1958 coin to do its job, in the hands of the executor of fate. Sugar asks the man to call the coin, and says that it wouldn't be fair to call the shots for another person. He doesn't really see himself as part of the equation. And the reason that he finds these little details like the date of the coin so interesting is that he truly believes that the other person is going to make a conscious choice. The coin has reached its final destination after a long journey and now it's Sugar's duty to execute the plan. Now the poor man has no other choice but to call the coin. He's lucky and gets to live another day. But the final interesting thing about this scene is that Sugar is actually happy about the results. Not because he was rooting for this guy to win, but because he has played his part. This is what sets him apart from other hedonistic serial killers. Of course, his thinking style is rigid, but he's not a unidimensional character and there's actually a way to understand him. He's unsettling and terrifying, but at the same time he's a man that sticks to his own beliefs and what he says. To examine this quality in him, we need to analyze the scene at the end of the movie. Before we move on to the next part, if you have enjoyed watching this video so far, it would mean a lot to me if you can just take a few seconds and hit the like and subscribe button. Now in the movie, Sugar's main task is to recover a briefcase containing $2 million from Leveling Mas, who took it from the scene of a failed drug deal. Mas is killed in an off-scene shooting with the mob, and Sugar later finds the suitcase in the vent of his motel room. So it would appear that Sugar's task is complete, and he could simply move on. There is just one catch for Sugar. Before Mas died, they had a conversation in which Sugar threatened to kill his wife unless he returned the money. Do you know where I'm going? No, she won't be there. You bring me the money and I'll let her go. Otherwise, she's accountable. The same as you. So, Sugar's last mission in this scene reflects his internal struggles. Mas was killed before he could discuss their conversation with anyone, so not following through on his word couldn't harm Sugar's reputation. However, within Sugar's logical framework, if he doesn't complete his task, he becomes someone like the shopkeeper, a person who doesn't value his own decisions and words. Now, some say that Sugar flips a coin just before killing innocent people to give them a chance. But I don't think Sugar has a good grasp on the idea of innocence. For him, other people are like bugs. If killing them is going to serve his purpose, he wouldn't hesitate about doing that. But the common theme between the two coin toss scenes is the element of uncertainty. So when Carla Jean says this, You don't have to do this. She opens up the possibility for negotiation. Sugar didn't care about the fact that Carla just buried her mother. But he sees himself as an agent of justice, and to demonstrate his fairness, he once again resorts to flipping a coin. This process is like a court trial, a trial that takes place in Sugar's mind in response to his need for justification and represents the best chance for others to survive. 